So you want to create a cool looking M&M candy bowl simulation type thing? Well, you've come to the right place. So first thing we're going to do is take our cube and then we're going to hit control five and that will give it a subdivision level um, of five. And we can go ahead over to the modifiers tab and apply that subdivision. And now we have a very subdivided cube. We're going to tab in edit mode and we're going to hit shift alt S and press one on the numpad and that will make our uh, cube completely spherical. Um, and now we have a sphere without, you know, stupid, you know, poles that might have some weird effects when we go into smooth shading later on. What we're going to do is hit one on the keyboard, hit shift Z to go into wireframe mode and select the, all the vertices above the X axis. Go ahead and press X and delete the vertices. Now we have a little bit of a bowl. Um, but this bowl, I actually kind of want to flatten out a little bit. So what we're going to do is press seven. Well, yeah, press seven and then select the middle vertice right there, which is right down here on the bowl. Uh, and we're going to hit one to go into uh, our front view and then press O to turn on proportional editing up here. And then you can hit G and then Z and drag it up a little bit. You can also scroll to increase or decrease the amount of affected vertices here. So that looks okay. Um, and then I also want to flatten the bottom of the bowl out. So I'm going to go into seven uh, and then I'm just going to kind of take an even amount of vertices right here, a square. Uh, and then I can press S and then Z and then zero. And then that will flatten out the bottom of the bowl. And if you have proportional editing mode turned on, you can kind of adjust how much of the bottom of the bowl will be flattened. So that looks okay. All right, so now with that made, we can shift the out of wireframe mode and then hit A to select everything. Now we're gonna add some thickness to the bowl, but make sure before you do this that you finish adjusting all of the pieces that you wanna adjust. All right, so I'm gonna hit E and then S to scale it in. And I'm gonna give it quite a bit of thickness, about, about that much. And that looks pretty good. Um, next thing we're gonna do is actually kind of round out this edge right here. So to do that, I'm gonna hold down Alt and select this top ring of vertices. And then I'm gonna hit Control B and just bevel it. And you can scroll up to add more vertices. And I might wanna hold down Alt, select this edge in here and double tap G to drag it down. If you want, you can right click. Well, maybe you can go up to uh, Vertex and Smooth Vertices. Maybe press that a few times to get rid of the sharp edge. Next thing we wanna do is hit A and go up here to your uh, viewport overlays and turn on face orientation. If it's red, that means your normals are facing the wrong way and we wanna fix that. So we're gonna go ahead and hit Alt in and select recalculate outside. And now we have normals facing the correct direction. After that, we want to kind of adjust where the origin of our bowl is. So we can right click, go to set origin, geometry to origin. Cool, now our origin is in the center of our geometry. We can also go ahead and turn off face orientation. Then we can right click, hit shade smooth, and shade the bowl smooth. All right, let's go ahead and add a floor. So hit shift A, go to mesh, and add in a plane. Scale it up pretty large, press one to go in front view. And we just wanna drag it below our bowl, like that. Cool, cool. Now we want to scale everything down to real world scale. So if we hit in, uh, and it'll bring up our little toolbar here, we can see the dimensions. Since I'm in America and I don't know the metric system, I can go to the scene and change it to uh, imperial units. There we go. Now it says my bowl is two feet tall and f has a five foot diameter, which is much too big. So we're gonna hit A to select everything and hold down period to change the pivot point and change it to 3D cursor, which should be at the origin. Now we can press S and keep an eye on our bowl's dimensions over here. So I want a bowl with maybe a foot, eh, maybe a f around a foot in diameter. That looks okay. The other thing that we wanna do is make sure that we apply the scale. So we're gonna select all the objects that our MMs will be interacting with, hit Control A and apply the scale because the physics engine does not like things with wrong wonky scales. Now if we select our bowl, you can see that the scale is reset to one with the correct dimensions. All right, let's go ahead and create an m, &M. First thing we're gonna do though, is rename our cube to bowl. Then we're gonna hit Shift A, add in a new mesh, and add in an icosphere. Scale it down a little bit, drag it up along the Z axis, and we'll go ahead and hide our uh, bowl and plane. 
to get a better look at our sphere. Let's go ahead and tab into edit mode. Select the top and the bottom vertices. Hit one to go to the front view, then hit S and then Z. Um, and also make sure that your um, pivot point is set back to uh, uh, median point. All right, now S, Z, and scale down a little bit. You can also adjust how much of it will be squashed by scrolling up or down if you have proportional editing still turned on. I want it to be about there, and then I'm gonna hit SZ and scroll up and just kind of inflate it a little bit. All right, that looks like an M&M. Cool, now we can tap out of edit mode, right click on it, and we can hit Shade Smooth. All right, now what we wanna do is drag up a new window and make it the Shader Editor. Then we can also drag out another window, make it the UV Editor, and let's go ahead and uh, adjust some settings here. So we're gonna go ahead and add a new material, Printable PSDF is fine. And we want to add in the M. So I'll put a link in the description to download this M. I just kind of downloaded it from Google and cut it out in Photoshop. Uh, and you can download it for free in the link in the description. So also I strongly recommend that you have Node Wrangler enabled. So go to edit preferences and type in uh, Node Wrangler. Make sure that it's enabled. With that enabled, we can select our principal BSDF and hit Control T. We'll add in this image texture setup right here with which we can open up our M&M. When we open it up, we won't be able to see anything and that's because we're in solid view. So go into material preview and this looks very wrong and that's because it is not unwrapped. First thing we're gonna do is go to your image texture and set it to clip. Then we can tab in edit mode, hit A to select everything and turn off scene overlays. Then we can hit U and select cube projection. Now what we wanna do is turn scene overlays back on Go to the bottom, select that vertice, and then hit Control and then Numpad uh, plus sign. Just increase it until you get to your uh, skinny piece right here in the middle, and then decrease it one so you don't have that. Then we can select this piece right here, and then scale it down, and move it off of the M. Then we can uh, hit A to select everything, select this piece, well, maybe select this piece in the middle and also uh, scale it down, turn off <laughs> proportional editing, so O to turn it off. And we can kind of move it out of the way, scale it down and move it out of the way. Same with this piece in the middle, scale it down and move it out of the way if you have that piece. Now we can take this piece in the middle and scale it up until we get the M in a spot that's looking right like that. All right, it's looking pretty cool. We can now tab out of edit mode and close off our UV editor. Okay, now we can go down here to the shader editor, drag all these uh, nodes out of the way, hit shift A, and add in a color ramp. Then we can really crush it. Also, make sure to connect the alpha of your uh, texture into the factor of the color ramp, just like that. So we should get a white M. We can also crush it to make the M skinnier, but we'll do that later on. Let's move these nodes out of the way and add in a new uh, mix RGB node. We can plug the color into, well, I guess color one and set it to multiply. Turn the factor to one. Now color two will uh, determine how dark our M is. And real m ms they do have your M bleeding in with the color a little bit. So now we can go ahead and hit Shift A and add in a new, uh, we'll do an RGB node just for the time being. We're gonna replace this later on though. And we're gonna hit Control Shift, right click and drag between these nodes, and it'll create a new Mix RGB node for us. Then we're gonna drag the color of this multiply node into the factor of the Mix node. And plug the RGB into the first color. Now we can turn the second color up to white, and to control how, uh, how much our color bleeds through the M, we can go to our multiply node and tone it down a little bit. Pretty cool. So now we have a little bit of an M&M here, but we want to set up a physics simulation. So turn your bowl back on, and this M&M is huge. So I'm gonna just uh, drag the Earth Shader Editor down a little bit. I'm gonna scale our M&M down to M&M size, about there, and then hit Control A and apply the scale. Cool. Now I'm gonna turn our plane back on, select our bowl and our plane, go to Object, Rigid Body, and add Passive. Cool. Then I'm gonna go to my M&M, 
object rigid body at active. If we press play, we can see what's happening. This MM is now hovering on the surface of the bowl, which is not what we want to happen. So to fix that, we can go to the bowl, go to the physics tab, and set the shape to mesh. Then go to sensitivity and turn the margin down to something like 0 0.034. Try that. Then we can go to the MM. And you can see that our MM now weighs 2.2 pounds, which is way too heavy for an MM. So we can go up to object, rigid body, calculate mass, and click something close to an MM like a peanut. Now our mass has changed to a really small number. If we press play, we have a little bit of an MM here. We can go ahead and go to the surface response and turn up the bounciness a little bit and turn the friction down a little bit. Pretty cool. Another thing I like to do is go up to the uh, scene, go to rigid body world, turn the steps per second to something like 150 and the solve for iterations to 12. Play that again, see what happens. All right, let's go ahead and start adding more M&Ms. So to do that, we're going to hit seven on the numpad, move our M&M over to the side of the bowl. Then we'll go to the modifiers tab and add in a new array modifier. Set the uh, relative offset along the uh, along this axis to 2.5, and set the count to four. Let's go ahead and uh, move our M and M over a little bit. You can hit copy on the array, clear out the first axis, and type in 2.5 on the second one. Move it over a little bit, and then copy the array one more time, and clear out the axis, and then type in 2.5 on the top one. Then we can kind of turn the count up a bit, maybe to like 11. Cool. Maybe go ahead and turn down the uh, offset a little bit between the M&Ms. Let's go ahead and change the amount of M&Ms to 15 for the last array. And then we can apply it. And go ahead and apply all three arrays. Then we can tab in edit mode, hit A to select everything, hit P and select by loose parts. We also want to make sure with everything, tab out of edit mode. We also want to make sure with everything selected that we hit M, add to new collection, we'll call it M and M's. Hit OK. Now we can take this collection and drag it back into our scene collection. Then we can hit Shift C, select all of them, and we can right click, hit set origin, origin to geometry. And now they all have the correct origin. If we look at each M&M, &M, we can go ahead into the physics tab and see that they all have um, the rigid body physics. So if we hit play, you can see we get a really cool looking simulation. But they fall too evenly. So let's go ahead and introduce some randomness. Shift Z, select them all, and we're going to hit F3 and type in random. Go to randomize transform, and then just turn the values up a little bit in all the axes. I, just, I like to turn the Z axis up a lot. Make sure that there's not a ton of M&Ms overlapping. I also like to introduce some random rotation. So make them all turn a certain way, and especially on the Z axis. Then I'm just gonna take all of my M&Ms, hit G and then Z and drag them up a little bit. I'm going to randomize them one more time, um, but only in the location. Cool. Now if we hit play, we can see what happens. All of our M&Ms are the same color though, so to fix that, let's drag up our shader editor again. Select an M&M with the material, and go to the RGB node. Hit X to delete it. Hit Shift A, and add in a new color ramp. And connect the color to the top color of the mix RGB node. Now, we want to add in six flags. So just go ahead and hit this button, until you have six flags. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can go down here to this arrow and select distribute stops from left so that they're all even. Then we want to make a few different colors. The first one should be red. The second one should be orange. The third one should be yellow. The fourth one should be green. Maybe darken it a little bit. The fifth one should be blue. And the sixth one should be brown. We also want to go ahead and set our color ramp to constant. Then if we hit Shift A and add in a uh, object info node, 
we can connect the random to the factor of the color ramp. Now our M&Ms are a bunch of different colors. If you want more of a color in the color ramp, you just have to adjust it a little bit. So now there's more red and a little bit more blue. A little bit more of a healthy mix, I think. Pretty cool. And now we have to give materials to everything else. Let's go ahead and go to the renderer and change it to cycles. Now if we select the bowl and give it a new material, we'll call it glass. Uh, and we go to the principal BSDF and we make it glass by turning the transmission up to one and turning the roughness down, let's say to 0 0.08. If we go to rendered mode, we'll see we have this weird black here. I'll, <laughs> I'll turn the light off and we will give it a um, little HDRI here. You can see we have this weird black ring around the bolt and we don't want that. I know you can uh, fix it a little bit by going up here to the light paths and turning the transmission up a little bit, but um, I don't really want to do that. And sometimes it doesn't work completely. So to fix that, we're going to hit Shift A, add in a new transparency node. Then we're going to hit Control Shift and right click and drag these two nodes together to create a mix shader node. Then we're going to hit Shift A and add in a light path node. Then we're going to connect the uh, reflection is reflection ray socket to the factor of the mix shader. Now our black line should be gone. Another thing you can do is go ahead and add a, a wood material to this floor. Um, if you want a little bit more guidance on that, you can go ahead and check out my Jello tutorial also on my channel, um, link in the description if you want to see that. But I'm going to go ahead and just give it a, a little material of my own. So I'm going to hit principal BSDF, hit control shift T, and then go to my blender materials. Select the base color, the glossiness, normal. We can also turn off scene overlays. If you want to add our m, &M animation to the bake, you can go to the scene world, the rigid body world, go to cache and select current cache to bake. And there you go. You have a super nice looking candy bowl ready to do anything that you want with. If you want to slow it down, you can always mess with the, the speed uh, and kind of find the frame where the candy collides. But at this point in time, we have a super nice looking candy bowl and an m, &M simulation uh, with randomized m, &M colors. Thank you so much for watching my tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. If you really like my channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Uh, and I will see you in the next tutorial.